yeah, we've got to look at today, really, and we've got to look at the environment of, of um, you know, uh, this word county lines gets thrown around. And it's like a lot of people who are not familiar with it, which I guess the majority of people don't realise what it is. And the way county lines has probably worked is that you get these gang members, if you want to call them gang members, groups of young people, that um, their main source of income, and lots of it, is drugs. So clearly what they do is they go out to rural parts of the country and they inevitably try and find um, other young lads, and maybe girls, that are roaming the streets or hanging about with certain groups. They befriend them. And then what they do is they start to line their pocket with a little bit of money, give them a mobile phone, and then they become part of the group. And next thing they know, they're asking them to sell drugs for them. And then what they'll do is every town centre, village, city has drug addicts. So, you know, they find a drug den and they give the guy that owns the drug den or the woman drugs. Then they put the young person in a drug den with the big bag of drugs. And then every two or three days when the drugs run out, they stay in the drug den, by the way, this young person, and they stay there, or, you know, and then all the drug addicts come to the one flat and they're all committing crime in the local town. So, you know, thousands of pounds worth of crimes being committed every day. If there's 20 drug addicts, they're committing probably eight to 10,000 pounds worth of crime a day, mainly shoplifting. And then when the drugs run out, the young boy will phone up part of the gang. The gang will send someone down on a train to drop off the drugs and pick up the cash and go back. You know, and then they get them. They got them then, you know. They, 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 they're trapped in it. So, you know, I think we educate every young person about county lines and these gang members because when these people get arrested, some of them, these young people, and go to prison, these gang members don't come and visit them. Their mum might. I probably will. I mean, the gang will just go and recruit someone else and use them, you know. And it won't last for long. And then we took at the amount of drugs, going back to the drug addicts and the alcohol, you know. There's, there's lots of drugs and there's social drug use and drinking and there's addiction and alcoholism. There's a, you know, there's a line there. We're not saying everybody who drinks is an alcoholic. Not at all. We're not saying everyone who takes drugs is a drug addict. If that was the case, the world would be full of alcoholics and drug addicts, wouldn't it? But we have to look at today and how alcoholism is rising. Addictions rising, yeah. You know, you can only become alcoholic if you abuse alcohol, and if you do, or well, you abuse drugs. And the drugs today are a little bit different than what they was years ago. They're putting all this spice and all these, you know, THC into cannabis, and it is making it stronger. Then you've got all these like ecstasy tablets. You know, we had three girls in Newcastle die a few months ago. You know, uh, students. I, I, you know, I put it on my on my social media, Twitter. You know, they went out, normal nice girls, weren't drug addicts, normal nice, probably really intelligent, done really well at school girls. You know, and they went out, bought a bad batch of ecstasy and it killed them, you know. And it's, uh, the drugs are there different. They've been manufactured in this country, a lot of them, and they've been pumped into the system and there's rubbish in there, you know. So half the time, these people don't know what they're taking, you know. And you talk about consumption rooms or places to test for drugs and you think, you know, if kids are going to take drugs, no matter what we say to them, you know, should there be a place where they can be tested if they're, you know, lethal? We know drugs ain't, you know, can be harmful. My experience tells me that. But we have to check and make sure that, you know, if these kids are going to these parties and raves and stuff they're buying, it's not going to, you know, be, be lethal and kill them. Um, then we talk about going back to alcoholism. You know, when I went to rehab, you know, I got, you know, I knew I was a full blown heroin addict crack addicts and you know took lots of drugs and alcoholic but you know uh, even today at 14 years sober and clean I still attend these groups you know um, you know certain fellowships I go to that help me and I uh, you know I haven't been going to them physically because of obviously lockdown but I do online you know these and if anybody you know watches this and after this they feel like you know maybe they have got a bit of an issue or their child's got a bit of an issue or, you know, with drugs or alcohol, then please feel free to, um, you know, contact me, Paul Hannaford on, on, on my website, www.paulhannaford.com or my Twitter or even my Instagram, you know, I do loads, but, you know, as I said, you know, it's uh, this social drinking and drug using and then there's addiction and, and alcoholism. So, you know, you've got to be careful. You abuse something for too long, then it may become a, problem later in life or younger life like it did me you know but there is help out there please believe me you know i attend these groups and i see all walks of life on there all different religions male female rich poor 
you know, it, we, we can all be affected by it, can't we? Whether it be in our family, personally, you know. So, um, yeah, this, you know, they, they, they don't give up ever hope. There's always, you know, there's always help and it's available. It's just a person asking for it, that's all it is. Having the courage to go, do you know what? Maybe I've got a bit of a problem. Let's see if I can seek a little bit of help, you know? So, yeah, uh, as I said, I'm always available to help anyone or give them some advice or forward them on to a professional, you know, organisation that deal with alcoholism addiction. You know, there's plenty out there. There's many of them. As I said, no, we're in lockdown now, and I guess, you know, you, I, I've seen a few um, um, bodies on Twitter saying that alcoholism has gone through, the, you know, pretty, it's, it's risen. So, yeah, you know, you can't, you, sometimes you can't blame people. They sit at home, and I guess, you know, it's quite easy to open a bottle of wine, isn't it? And, you know, and then next day you do another bottle, another bottle, another bottle, and then, you know, five months' time, six months' time, you know, you're back at work, and... COVID's gone, then you're still drinking that two bottles of wine a night, you know? So just be careful, you know? So, yeah, I'm not judging anybody. You know, what they do in their homes entirely up to them. But I'm saying if they feel like, you know, something's become a bit of an issue, then feel free to contact me, you know? Yeah, hi, yeah. So anyway, yeah, I forgot to mention, um, a year ago, I got approached um, by somebody, a close friend, um, and he said, you know, would you ever think about writing a book? You know, at this point, I'm 13 years clean. I'm speaking to hundreds of thousands of kids. And please believe me, you know, I, if I was going to write a book, I'd have written it, you know, when I was a year clean. I, I had no intentions, none whatsoever. And I went to his kids' school as well and become friends after. And he uh, he funded it for me, or let me the money to do it. And, and he said it's such a powerful story because it's not about, it, it's, it, this book's not about me. You know, it's here. It's called uh, The Unconscious Kid. Yeah, this isn't about me. This is about society. This is everything to do with early intervention education. This is to do with responsibility. This is to do with, you know, many, many things, the harm. And on the back, I just read the last bit. It says, you know, if you mind reading this, is that okay, yeah? What it says here, the synopsis is, it said, I was transformed from a bright, energetic, fun-loving child to a hollowed out shell of a person, barely human in the way I lived in the most horrendous conditions. I struggled with addiction and illness that caused me untold harm to me, my family for over two decades. I now want to give something back and give the real lived insight into my experience that everyone is, is yeah, so everyone can know the horrific realities, yeah? And then last bit on the synopsis says, why do I do this? You know, why am I so passionate about this thing? The reason I'm so passionate about it is because alcoholism addiction, yeah, right, is in all our communities right now. We know it is, yeah? Without any doubt, addiction is everywhere. I mean everywhere. And addiction does not discriminate, and it does not care how old you are, how rich or smart you are, or what area you're from. And it doesn't care about your history, your culture, or your beliefs, yeah? It will obliterate all of them. It is cunning, powerful, and hard to overcome. I know this because addiction nearly killed me and many people I know. And, and my job today is to educate as many young people as possible by telling my story. Over the past 10 years, I've spoken to 500,000 young people, parents, teachers, doctors, nurses, and even the police. In fact, anybody who is concerned about the well-being of our society, and most importantly, our future generation. And as you know, I'm clean and sober today, and this is my story. And in this book, it's everything. It's about families. It's about early intervention. It's about how we take care of ourselves. There's even pictures in here, you know, but as I said, this is, um, I don't know, it's quite horrific. These were my injuries from, from my legs, from injecting, as we explained. And then the last picture, which is probably the best one, you know, is uh, me and my daughter and my mum and my dad, you know. This is all about family, all the people that, you know, were affected by drugs and alcohol, you know, my family. Not just me trying to nearly kill myself every day, you know, with this illness. So this book isn't really about me, it's about all of us. You know, all of us are in this in some form or another. So yeah, you know, and I hope that whoever buys it and reads it will, uh, will realise that, you know, if you, if you can help someone, if you are a teacher and you've got kids in front of you, then get, get someone to speak to them. You know, if you're a parent and you've got a child that's maybe going down that road, just, there's, there's help, you know, there's help. So yeah.